welcome back to another episode of DIY Townhouse for Dummies. Today I'm going to teach you how to set up your Citra MMJ Beat on your phone so that you can play your 3DS games like this. And this is pretty easy, so I will do that step by step in case you don't know how to set it up. And this is just a gameplay video of um, the outcome that I have set it on my phone so you may get a similar outcome if you have a similar spec or you may even get a better outcome if your chipset is better than mine. I'm using a um, an, an Android phone with Snapdragon 855 so if you have any chip that is higher than that you may probably get a better performance. With that being said, let's get started. When you first launch your app, you will have to allow the app to use your microphone because this is not my very first time. It actually has the record of where my ROM files are. Um, so I just want to quickly show you how to add ROMs. Uh, if you are adding CIA files, you just go to the right hand side and click the three dots and then click install CIA. Then just like this, check the CIA file and then click OK. Then it will take a while to install, but then it will help you to install. And if you're not installing CIA file, you're just using the 3DS files, you can click the plus sign on the right hand side and go to the directory where you store your 3DS ROMs, then you are good to go. It will show like this. Um, I just want to quickly mention that um, the way it works on the phone is a little bit different from what we have on our PC because on our PC we have to decrypt our 3DS files but on our phone um, it can actually load up phone, uh, 3DS files without decryption so it is a little bit easier to have your games on your phone instead of your PC. So it may take a little while and I'm going to skip to the screen where I have already installed it. So after installing your CIA file, if it is not appearing, you can either press the refresh button just like I did, or you can quit the app so that you can refresh the app again and then you get back to the app, it will probably show and if it's not showing, then probably you haven't installed it correctly. Um, so if it is installed, you'll be able to launch it by just clicking it. And that's it for the um, game installing. And then let's move on to our next step, uh, input binding. So this is just necessary for those who are using a controller like me here. If you're not using a controller for your gameplay, then you really don't need to do this step. But I really recommend you to have a controller for this because it is a lot easier and a lot more comfortable. Uh, if you are not sure which key to be bind to which um, in reference to your controller, then you can just simply follow what I'm doing right here. If you have uh, your own preference, then it's totally okay. And just uh, make sure you have find your keys and save it, then you will be able to use it. Uh, next, I want to change the resolution to 2x because it will be a lot more clear on our phone. And uh, I want to click the new 3DS filter and then click the animation region to Japan, which I prefer to. So um, this is pretty much what you want to do on um, your basic settings. If you don't want to show the FPS, you can uncheck it as well. Um, I basically use the side to side layout for my gaming because I just think that is better for me. Next, we go to the in-game setting. We do that by clicking back button and then this uh, window will appear. Then we click settings and we scroll down and we want to check the FMV 
hack, and then we want to change uh, the opacity of the keys, and then um, you can actually change your resolution again if this is not very small. But uh, this is pretty much a a uh, general tag that we want to use for most of the games. If not, um, I mean the FMV hack is very important to maintain uh, the game speed because um, most likely in Pokemon or some other games it can be very slow. So we we have that FMV hack, things are a lot easier and smoother. So let's head to Pokemon Ultra Moon to see what's the difference. So basically it launched well. It's a smooth at the beginning, but then oh, there are some slowdowns when it comes to those uh, 3D images. So now we are going back to the settings scroll down and check the F and the hack and that is pretty much what we are trying to do so you see um, just in this intro video we can see some improvement as well um, you can actually test it on your own you can see the difference between having the FMV hack or not having the FMV hack it really changed a lot, so I really recommend you to do so. If the FMV hack is not enough to help you uh, having a smoother emulation, then uh, you may want to do the following. You can see that uh, there are some shuddering here. Um, so basically, you go to the uh, back button again and then press settings and go to the bottom and change the accurate MUI to fast. Then this should help you to improve your gaming experience. Just one extra tip. Um, if you're using Android 11, you may probably face a problem that you can't really load your games from your SD card. That is because the system is blocking Citra from accessing the SD card to load the files. So if you are trying to load your files from SD card, I suggest you to stay on Android 10 instead of Android 11. Uh, most of the other emulators doesn't, do not have this problem, but um, for Citra in particular, we are facing this problem for a while and it hasn't been fixed until the point I made this video. So um, I strongly advise you to stay on Android 10 uh, for any emulation purpose. So that's all for this step-by-step -step setup tutorial and optimization guide. Um, unfortunately, there are not much options for us to tweak on Citra because it is still under development. But we do hope to see more features in the future. And if there is any big update, I will make another tutorial to tell you guys. So thank you for watching. See you later on the next episode. Bye.